let's talk about the Philippines and you know is it good for retirement yes or no definitely I think it is really good for retirement I think it's a great place to retire if not the very best place in Asia to retire so I guess you're wondering you know Pete why is that the case so let's talk about the pros and let's talk about the cons. So we've got the beach behind me and you can see this shipping vessel, Costco shipping, heading out into the bay. And to the left hand side, you've got Han Jin there, really cool. So I'm in Subic Bay, obviously, this is my home. And literally, I think Subic of all places, is probably the best for retirement here in the Philippines but you know there's just so many options in the Philippines here <laughs> sorry for the distraction I just thought that was cool you know I'm just enjoying this beautiful weather because it's been raining and I'm just watching that shipping vessel uh, head out to sea uh, it's really cool good to see actually I haven't seen much movement in regards to ships lately but anyway let's get back to the subject at hand which is retirement is you know the philippines a good place and definitely you know, i think philippines is awesome and like i said it's going to be just an impromptu vlog today speaking from the heart i think look i'm not retired personally but i could definitely see myself retiring here i mean we've got thousands and thousands of islands and you know different places to explore here in the philippines you know islands we've got coves we've got beaches and lots of things to do and you know if you get bored of that you've got the big cities too so you've got places like you know metro manila you know cebu um, even places like angeles or, or subic um, you know if you don't want to be too far out in the provinces personally you know i'm looking forward to 20 plus years from now to retire i'm not retired yet but for me what I'd be doing is I'd be exploring the Philippines because there's just so many beautiful destinations here in the Philippines, you know, beautiful places, beautiful people. And I, I've got to vouch for the people because honestly, you know, prior to coming to the Philippines, people told me that, you know, the Philippines was dangerous. The Philippines was unsafe. And I think the first time I came to the Philippines was about 14 years ago in 2006. And, um, you know, my friends thought I was crazy, but honestly, I think it's just media hype or something because I, I don't see the danger. I, I haven't really seen it. Um, yeah, sure. If you go to the wrong area, it could be like Tondo in Metro Manila, you know, it might be a bad part of town. But hey, if you know it's a bad part of town, stay away from it. I mean, don't go there. I mean, it's just crazy. But overall, especially, you know, the places that I've lived, you know, in the Philippines, they've been more than safe. And in fact, I find them safer and more quiet than, you know, what I'm used to back home in Australia. And I'll give you a couple examples just quickly. The first example is like I lived in Sydney. You might have a night out in King's Cross or I've also lived on the Gold Coast as well. And the Gold Coast, you've got, you know, Orchard Avenue. And uh, Orchard Avenue can be a bit rough. You know, you go out and, and people are, you know, drunks, you know, young drunks wanting to get into a blue, wanting to get into a fight, you know. And, you know, you could be king hit by someone for no reason. Whereas here in the Philippines, there's a lot of retirees already here. So for retirees, you know, the bar scene, it's a bit of an older scene. And what I mean by that is, you know, most of the guys that are going out to these bars, they're not like in their 20s and 30s, their 40s and up. So most people, you know, and some are like 50, 60 plus, right? So for most, you know, people here, you know, foreigner expats, actually they're the retirees. And yeah, I get a bit jealous sometimes because, you know, I'm still working. I'm, I'm still working my butt off, you know, trying to make ends meet, and make something for myself. And I think the other thing too here when it comes to retirement, and obviously there are restrictions when, you know, buying property, you know, house and land, but you can own a house on lease house, pole property. And if you're not interested in buying, you can rent, you know, very affordably. So, you know, it's very affordable still here to rent. 
you know, if in the heart of the city nowadays it's going up, like Subic, Subic Bay, you know, the cheapest you'll get is probably 40,000 baht a month, which is about 800 US dollars a month. And I'm talking for a villa or a townhouse. That's the very cheapest, okay? My friend actually got one for 35,000 in the last 12 months. Okay, so he did get one cheaper. Um, over the years, you know, you used to get one for like 25, 30, but you know, things are going up. But if you go a bit further out that way, you know, here in Subic Bay, um, definitely you'll find something for 20 to 25,000. Absolutely. And there's lots of options. You know, you could get a monthly place in a hotel. You could, you know, hop around or you might decide that, you know, maybe you've settled down with someone that you love and you know you want to get a house and you want some stability and have you know some room and you know to live kind of like we do in the west and have that western style living and that's what i'm talking about when i'm talking about 800 dollars a month because that's what it costs you know that same place in australia like if i was in sydney the same place would cost me probably four to five thousand dollars a month so a big difference eight hundred dollars versus say four thousand dollars <laughs> it's a lot lot cheaper it's like one fifth the price and let's talk about expenses and cost of living so you know rent's cheap to buy a place is cheap um, you know beers are cheap you know there's a lot of cheap things here okay so um, yeah <laughs> if you come here with a little you, you still can live like a king now the other thing I want to talk about relationships because you might be a single bachelor who's retired you might have gone through a divorce and I have close friends that have gone through separations I've been through a separation you know um, some close friends and family been through a divorce and it's really nasty and you know I, I know a couple of gents and they just will not date again and what I can say here in the Philippines is you know for some of you guys who are nearing like your 50s and 60s you know, you might think like the dating game, it's over, like you're shot and it, there's no more. But here in the Philippines, actually, the Filipina are actually looking for an older, mature guy who can give them a sense of security. Okay, because that is number one. That is most important. And I know that might sound terrible to some people, but it's kind of like the good old days in the 1940s and 1950s. You know in the western world whereby you know if you were a provider you worked hard your whole life and you provided there was nothing wrong with taking a younger bride who would respect and love you and it's and it's definitely the way here in the philippines so filipina definitely will go with older guys you know she could be 21 you could be 55 that's normal okay and you know there's some people that say oh this age gap thing is a, a terrible thing and these these older guys are preying on women it's just not true man honestly that's not true and i'm going to defend some of these gentlemen because you know a lot of the guys that i've met here especially in subic and even angelese like most of them are really really nice guys and um you know they just want someone who's genuine who they can trust and have a a loving relationship and some of the guys, you know, they found that and actually it's not hard to find. It's really not. There is a plethora of young women looking for steady, secure relationships with, you know, expat men. And, you know, it used to be the same for places like, you know, Thailand, for example. In Thailand, you know, previously, um, you know, older men would go there to find like a Thai bride. Vietnam as well. China as well also, but nowadays China, Vietnam, Thailand, forget it. Especially Thailand, forget it. I mean, trying to find someone in Thailand that's going to be loving, that's going to be trustworthy and genuine is very, very hard to find. And like, yes, you might want a young girl who's pretty and you'll find that here in the Philippines, but you'll also find something more. You'll find someone that is real. You'll find a woman that is real and it is possible to find women that you can trust. And look, Filipina are not perfect. You know, they're different to Western women. And sometimes that does frustrate me. But what I can say, you know, about my partner and my relationship is, you know, we do have a level of trust. You know, I can trust, I have confidence in her. I know we, we have something that's secure if I want it. 
actually the man in the relationship has far more power in the relationship than what the woman does. Um, it, it's just it's just true, right? It, it's again that traditional style of you know the women will respect the man, you know, and be be good to the man. Keep in mind, it depends on the woman. I wouldn't be going out there and dating, you know, like a high-flying city girl. You know, I prefer country girls personally. I wouldn't wouldn't be going out and going to the bars and picking up a girl either because, like, likely the chance the chances are you're gonna get burnt. You're gonna have a bad time. So rule number one is don't date bar girls. Okay, that's. That's just normal. Some of you might, some of you might be lucky, date a bar girl seriously and have a good relationship. But, you know, I think it's it's few and far between. So, you know, try and go on dating websites to find girls, okay? I'm, I'm just saying. So it's not just about dating and the relationships you can have here. You know, it's more than that. What I would say here too is there's a lot of opportunity. So, you know, if you're older, and you've got like let let's face it like the average American probably you know when they retire might have you know four or five hundred thousand dollars you know in savings you know, with four to five hundred thousand dollars what can you do here in the Philippines? You can buy a house, you could buy a couple of flats, you could buy a holiday house, you could buy a business, you could buy all of those things, you know, and you know have a place you know to live, a roof over your head and not have that expense to worry about, not have the rent bill, and buy property to obviously, you know, fund your lifestyle. So I know a lot of foreigners here, and I know one guy in particular who went and bought like 10 houses here in Subic Bay, and he lives really well. He lives in a big house, and he does really well, and uh, lives in a nice big house, and then, you know, he's probably earning like, 500,000 peso, which is like $10,000, okay, $10,000 a month, okay, and yeah, look, he probably spent over, way over a million dollars, like, you don't need to do that, you know, how I feel about it is, you know, I'm kind of like one of those expats that wants to retire and have the champagne lifestyle on a beer budget, and I'm telling you, if you're smart, you're sma savvy, and you're shrewd and you wait to pounce on those bargains. You'll find a bargain. You'll you'll find a nice house for a hundred to hundred and fifty thousand. Yes, prices are going up. You'll find something like that, and then you'll be able to find maybe a block of flats for 150, 200 that you know you could potentially rent for let's say eighty to a hundred thousand, you know, peso per month. So that's that's gonna yield you some good income, so you can have a great lifestyle. Now. We talked a bit about, you know, the positive things and look, there's a lot of positive here in the Philippines. Let's talk about the negative. Oh yeah, and before we talk about the negative, I want to also talk about visas because that's important. You know, in Thailand, visas are getting way too hard. They're getting a lot harder. Philippines, you've got your retirement visa. I think you just need to put in something like, I think the most expensive one is like $50,000, something like that. There are options for those that are married to Filipina. So if you're married, I don't think you need to spend that. I think you need to spend like next to nothing. It's only a few thousand dollars. So it depends also on your personal situation, but ultimately there are options uh, for you to get, you know, retirement visas or long-term visas here very, very easily in the Philippines. You just need to have some money. Okay, so just need to have some money behind you. So, Let's talk about the negative, and I don't want to spend too much time on this, but let's talk about it. Yes, you could lose your home, okay? If you're silly and you trust the wrong girl and you buy a property in her name and it's a house, you could lose it. Let's say you bought a resort, and look, there's some great opportunities here to buy, you know, beach resorts in some, you know, remote, beautiful beach locations or, you know, some beautiful cove where you live the life it's getting a bit harder here in Subic but definitely places like Bohol uh, Bohol um, even like Carabao Island or places closer to um, you know Boracay Boracay is a bit expensive nowadays but opportunities with opportunity comes risk because like let's say 
you're investing in a beach resort or something like that, which could be a great idea, great business for retirement, but it's also risky because you might have to put it in a company name or put it in your wife's name. Most likely you're gonna put it in a family member or a wife's name. I mean, personally, I'd probably be putting it in my son's name because I have a child and you know I could have some control over that until he's of age, at least 18 or above. But the thing is, when you're putting something in someone else's name, like your wife, let's say you have a bit of a falling out. That's where things can get nasty, and I've seen situations whereby foreigners get, you know, expat foreigners get in hot water, and it gets really nasty. So you gotta be careful. Also, again, it comes down to the woman. You know, which, which girl do you pick? Do you pick the prettiest girl with the most beautiful smile? Or do you pick the one that, you know, she might not be the prettiest girl, but she might be the one that you can trust and, and you feel safe and secure with. Personally, I, I think you, you pick the second one, but, um, you know, that's up to you. Also, you know, like to be fair, if you're going around and you're sleeping around and you're not being faithful and you're not being loyal and you're married, like she could get angry she could be very angry and she could say nothing to you she might even give you tampa and then one day you come home and the doors are locked okay and you know it's like hey how you going this is my house now that can happen i'm not going to allude to the fact that it does happen um you just need to be safe the other thing too is don't put all your eggs in one basket. Like for me personally, you know, I will be buying a house definitely in my son's name. Not now, because things are a bit tight, um, but probably in a few years from now, I was hoping it would be soon, but it's not gonna happen for me personally. Just things are too expensive at the moment. They've gone up and my budget's very, very slim. Very. <laughs> but anyway, like this is what I'm saying. The other thing too is like, here there is a bit of corruption you know people say that there's no corruption and things are a lot better than they used to be and honestly i'm going to call those people out because they're just lying all right there's still corruption here um you know like i'm even seeing it during COVID 19 and it really pisses me off because some people are still traveling like we've been stuck here for six months and some people are like kind of doing something dodgy maybe getting like a fake travel pass or you know maybe they're part of some big corporation or something and they can they can get some pass so you know like there's ways to kind of like if you're in the upper echelons um you know that's just how things are like you're gonna be able to yeah you'll you'll find a way around it i'm sorry but it's true and it is happening and i have seen it the other thing too is i'll say one thing for the philippines um i won't say that the Philippines is a racist place because I don't agree with that. But I will say most definitely wholeheartedly, the Philippines is classist. Okay, so it's classist in the sense that, you know, if you have money and you're wealthy, literally you can have anything, you can buy anything you want. You know, you're good, you're solid. But if you're poor, you kind of look down upon, you know what I mean? And you don't have the same opportunities as others and you're not, as well respected okay so you know if you're just you know an average guy with not a lot of money that wants to buy a little you know shack in the provinces you might not be that well respected but if you're like a guy that has lots of money wants to start a bpo and employ a hundred people you know as a foreigner you're going to be very well liked and very well respected and you're going to have like what the chinese say and i've you know lived in china a long time and sorry, I'm not looking directly in the camera. It's a bit glary. Um, but like what the Chinese say, might pull my sonny's back on, is it's about Guangxi. You know, it's about network. It's about, you know, your connections. And it's kind of like the same here in the Philippines. There's, honestly speaking, there's a lot of similarities between the Philippines and relationships and just making money based on relationships as it is to China. So. You know, all of Asia is very similar like that. But, you know, I found the Philippines is extremely, extremely, um, it's very much like China in that sense. So, yeah, like expect also as a foreigner, 
you're gonna have skin tags. It's it's a real thing, and you know you're gonna have it. There's there's ways to avoid that and to get more respect and you know to be more part of the community by you know be, you know trying to be part of the community, giving back to the community. But you know there's a cost to that also. Another way I'm gonna speak about my friend Dwayne Dwayne Woolley. He's a good friend of mine. Um, he's from the same place I, I'm from in Australia, uh, on the Gold Coast in Australia. Um, Dwayne, you know, he speaks the language. He's a Mormon, he did his mission, and he spent like several years going around the Philippines and learning Tagalog. He, he speaks like Tagalog and Visayas and like three or four different dialogues um, here in the Philippines. So, you know, his views are out of control. You know, he's got over, a million subscribers, he's very, very popular, he's done extremely well. And he's well liked, okay? And that's the perfect example. Also, not just for retirees, but for younger people, not just retirees that are like 55, 60 re retiring, but you know, you could be younger in your mid 30s or 40s and really being successful in business and want to just kind of have a, se you know, a semi-retirement or settle down in the Philippines there's definitely a good opportunity for you here in the Philippines and actually more so than if you're older. If you're younger, the younger you come here, the more opportunity that you will have, okay? And I've definitely seen that and like, I'm not trying to boast or anything, but no, I haven't had a great amount of success, but I've, I've had a, you know, a moderate level of success, you know, to the level that I'm comfortable. You know, I own my house, you know, I have other property, I do have loans. I am working hard, you know, to pay off those loans and make something of myself and provide for my family. So I would say, you know, I'm, I'm probably, you know, middle class, I'm, I'm middle class and I'm, I'm doing well and I'm happy, you know, where I am in life. And I think I, I've done, you know, pretty well and I'm happy with what I have. So yeah, it's a modest lifestyle, but it's cool. So look, the other thing to Philippines, you gotta be quick. And what I mean by that is Philippines is becoming more and more expensive. Like back in the day, like, and I'm, I, I feel like I'm in my late fifties now talking about this saying back in the day, back in my old, my day, son. <laughs> but back in the day when I first came to the Philippines, you know, everything here was cheap. And I, I'm talking about property and businesses and just opportunity in general, but. Like you, you could find a resort for seven, eight million peso that was good on a, on a good beach. That same resort now will cost 30, 40 million plus. Okay, like that's what it will cost, right? I'm talking peso, I'm talking peso, not dollars. Okay, and you know, like condos, like five star condos in Metro Manila and Cebu, you used to get them for like 60, 70 grand. Now, 200,000 minimum. And I'm talking about areas like, you know, Metro Manila, like BGC or Makati or, you know, Cebu, you know, IT Park, you really need a decent whack of money, like to buy a nice place in a good location, even, even uh, like 50 square meters. I'm talking like 50, 60 square meters. I'm talking like 200 grand US dollars, whereas it used to be like 70 or 80,000. So definitely, you know, the opportunity here to retire here is not going to last forever. You know, when opportunity knocks, you know, open that door and take it because, you know, you don't know when that opportunity might close. But, you know, with every opportunity, with every door that closes, another door opens. So just, just trying to say, you know, like, it's getting harder here. It's definitely not getting easier. What shocked me is even with COVID-19, you know, the property sale prices from 2019 to 2020 have actually increased. So there's been more sales June, July, 2020 than there were property sales June, July, 2019. Now I am just shocked about that. I don't know why. And this was a real estate friend of mine, Nolly, how you going buddy? Um, who actually mentioned this to me and that shocked me and it's just because honestly people speak English here there's good opportunity here it's the new destination for tourism for retirement you know Thailand's like 
moved down in the ranks and Philippines moving up in the ranks. You know, even for business, it's a much better place for business. It's even better to do business here nowadays than it is Hong Kong or Singapore, because Hong Kong and Singapore is just too bloody expensive. So there's just so much opportunity here and the growth here is wild. So for those of you naysayers who say, don't buy property in the Philippines, don't do that, mate, if you didn't buy, if you came here 10, 15 years ago and you didn't buy, let me tell you, you are devastated. You must be, yeah, just devastated that you didn't buy that condo or that house for 50 grand and it's now 200 or 300 grand, okay? Because, you know, stuff has moved up and up. And look, yes, I think definitely there's gonna be a lot more foreclosures and opportunity to come in COVID-19. But I think, you know, in conclusion, it's still a great opportunity to retire here and to buy something here, whether it be house and investment, a business, a resort, what, whatever you're looking to buy. You know, I think it's still a good opportunity, especially now that you can, you know, get something because it's more a buyer's market than a seller's market nowadays with COVID-19. But I think once we finally get past this COVID-19, we will see this growth just continue to skyrocket. And like I said, I haven't really seen prices come back. All I've seen is it's become more of a buyer's market and you can negotiate a bit harder. That's it, that's it. I do love the Philippines. I, I definitely love this place. I'm, I'm here to stay for good. I'm definitely here for good. You know, I've got my family here. I've got my son here. And for myself personally, you know, I don't want to be, uh, I want to be more modest, I think. So, you know, if I buy anything more, maybe I will buy like one house for my son. You know, just one thing for my son, like some land for my son, you know, long term. So, you know, when he grows up, he has something in his name because I love him. I care about him, um, but it's not going to be something over the top. You know, I've always been a bit of a cheap Charlie, definitely, I'll, I'll say, when it comes to real estate and buying property. You know, I'm, I'm a bargain hunter. Let, let's use the word bargain hunter. In conclusion, yes, I think the Philippines is still number one to purchase property here in Asia. And I think it is by far the best place to live and retire in all of Asia, hands down. So thanks for watching. Have a great day and double thumbs up.